The Xiaomi Mi 10 Ultra is the biggest smartphone in every dimension. In fact, it's not far off from the Samsung's recently released Galaxy Note 20 Ultra. The Mi 10 Ultra is heavy and can be cumbersome if you don't have big hands and deep pockets. Xiaomi went with a glass sandwich design with aluminum rails and carved glass on both sides. On the front, there's a full-size display with a punch hole in the top left and a speaker grill above the glass. The Mi 10 Ultra is not IP certified, which is unfortunate. Other phones at this price point, particularly those from Apple and Samsung, offer protection from water and dust. Xiaomi opted for a 6.67 inch Full HD Plus 120Hz OLED panel instead of a Quad HD Plus screen. At this price, I don't think this is a problem given there are many amazing tech that's packed into the device. The panel is smooth and fast as well as vibrant with deep contrast. If you don't like the excellent adaptive color setting, you can change it in the comprehensive display settings menu. Brightness was quite good even under direct sunlight, the Mi 10 Ultra was easily viewable. The Xiaomi Mi 10 Ultra skips the fresh Snapdragon 865 Plus in favor of the regular 865. Either way, the Xiaomi Mi 10 Ultra is very fast. I didn't have a single performance problem in my week with this device. I played lots of games, took many photos and did a lot of multitasking. I just couldn't get the Mi 10 Ultra to stutter. I think it's fair to say that whatever you do on your phone will be light work for this device. It comes with 8, 12 or 16 GB of RAM depending on the variation. Camera wise the Mi 10 Ultra comes with a quad camera setup. There's the main 48 megapixel main camera, a 20 megapixel ultra wide camera, a 12 megapixel portrait camera and finally a 120x ultra zoom camera. The Xiaomi Mi 10 Ultra takes punchy and contrast heavy images with a fair amount of dynamic range. This device seems to be able to capture white balance well. On dull days the phone took dull photos, on bright days the phone took bright photos. The Mi 10 Ultra's biggest photography feature is its zoom functionality. Samsung offered 100x zoom in the S20 Ultra but the Xiaomi is offering 120x in the Mi 10 Ultra. I found the Mi 10 Ultra's night mode to be one of the worst I have ever encountered on a flagship smartphone. It struggled with flares, captured very little detail and was overall rather disappointing. On the front there is a single 20 megapixel camera for selfie duties. The Mi 10 Ultra takes some decent selfies but there is a fair amount of skin smoothing going on. Selfie portrait mode photos seem to look rather realistic. The Mi 10 Ultra's video is average at best. It's got 8K video at 24fps alongside the standard USD 60fps mode. There's also a 960fps slow motion mode. On the surface, the Mi 10 Ultra's battery is an average size for this class of smartphone. It's a 4500mAh cell in a device with 5 cameras, a power hungry chipset and a big high refresh rate display. Xiaomi's software, however, works aggressively in the background, killing applications and optimizing power users to deliver good battery life. The device charged from 0 to 100% in just 21 minutes in our testing. It includes 120W fast charging, it also comes with 50W wireless charging and 10W reverse wireless charging. The Huawei P40 Pro Plus feels excellent in hand. The Pro Plus features a quad curve overflow display which means they have carved glass at all four edges. This device looks genuinely unique and recognizable in a sea of smartphones packing same design from the front. Available in high gloss black or white, a key differentiator between the P40 Pro and P40 Pro Plus is the material used around the back. Display itself is a 6.58 inch OLED panel with vivid colors, deep blacks and customizable color temperature and display options. Viewing angles and outdoor viewability are great. You can expect identical performance across the P40 Pro and P40 Pro Plus given the fact both pack Kirin 990 chipsets with 8GB of RAM. We found the Huawei P40 Pro Plus to be just as speedy as other top-end phones such as the Galaxy S20 or iPhone 11. The P40 Pro Plus packs a powerful rear camera setup, equipped with 5 lenses. The main lens here is a 50 megapixel sensor and a 40 megapixel ultra wide lens. The Pro Plus sports two telephoto snappers, both packing 8 megapixel resolution. The first telephoto camera features a 3x zoom and the second features a 10x optical zoom. Both of these lenses feature optical image stabilization and there is a time of flight 3D depth sensing camera in the mix too. Through a combination of hardware and software, Huawei says the phone is able to achieve 100x zoom. As for the video recording capabilities of the Pro Plus, it comes with 4K video recording at 60fps. The front camera is among the best we have ever tested with 32 megapixel of resolution and a secondary depth sensor for maximum impact selfies. 
This phone captures stunning details combined with dynamic range and excellent low light performance to handle virtually any environment you shoot. The Huawei P40 Pro Plus has a 4200 mAh battery inside and its performance is fantastic. It can easily last a full day through intensive use. It also supports 40W fast charging and there's also 40W wireless charging too. It have a 6.78 inch display that packed with many features to enhance your viewing experience. It has a ultra HD resolution with 10 bit color, a variable 120Hz refresh rate and a 240Hz touch input rate. There is also a post ultra vision engine chipset which can automatically upgrade 60fps video to 120fps to fit the screen rate. These features combine to deliver a screen that's vibrant and which should display content beautifully. There's no 3.5mm headphone jack here, so fans of wired headphones will be disappointed. The phone is IP68 protected though, so it's safe from dust and water to a high degree. There's plenty of reason to believe the Oppo Find X2 Pro will be a processing powerhouse. It's got the top-end Snapdragon 865 chipset and 12GB of RAM. The Snapdragon chipset endows the Find X2 Pro with super-fast 5G connectivity, as it has a 5G modem built-in. Oppo told us there won't be a 4G-only X2 handset. The Oppo Find X2 Pro has three rear cameras, two of which have 48 megapixel sensors, the main camera and an ultra wide snapper, while the third is a 13 megapixel telephoto snapper. This shooter has the same lens as the zoom module of the Oppo Reno 10X zoom, so it supports 5x optical, 10x hybrid, and 60x digital zoom. There are a few interesting features Oppo has included, such as the phone's ability to capture raw images. Raw files capture more brightness and color information than regular JPEG images, giving you more scope to process them in editing software. And an autofocus system based on Sony's alpha cameras, there is also 4K video recording at up to 60fps. On the front of the phone, there is a 32MP front-facing camera in the cutout segment. Overall, the Find X2 Pro produces excellent exposure and captures a good amount of detail, even in overcast weather. Colors are accurate and lean more towards the realistic side rather than being oversaturated. In terms of battery life, you are getting a 4260mAh pack, which would normally be pretty generous for a flagship phone. Although because of the large screen and high-end display tech, it may not actually last very long. The Oppo Find X2 Pro uses Oppo's 65W fast charging which will apparently get the device from empty to 100% in 35 minutes or less. OnePlus has added the best display it's ever made on the 8 Pro and the Chinese company says it's the best screen you will see on a phone for 2020. It is a 6.78 inch fluid display with a 120Hz refresh rate, HDR10 Plus support and QHD resolution. The OnePlus 8 Pro features a circular punch hole camera cutout in the top left corner of the screen. The OnePlus 8 Pro is the first handset from the brand to carry an official IP rating, which means it's officially protected against dust and water. The phone features Qualcomm's top-of-the-line Snapdragon 865 chipset, which comes with Qualcomm's X55 5G modem to enable super-fast internet speeds where 5G is available. The OnePlus 8 Pro packs four rear cameras including a 48MP main camera with an 1.78 aperture. There's also a 8MP telephoto camera with a 3x optical zoom and ultra-wide 48MP camera with a 119-degree field of view and a dedicated 5MP color filter camera that lets you apply artistic filters as you are shooting. The OnePlus 8 Pro's main 48MP camera and wide-angle shooter take sharp and vibrant shots, especially in outdoor lighting. The dynamic range and color accuracy is great. In addition to that, the camera's 3x lossless zoom can take pictures without losing detail. It can also digitally zoom up to 30x, but the photo quality really degrades at this level. The camera can also shoot 4K video and has optical image stabilization. On the front, there is a single 16MP selfie camera which delivers stunning quality. Overall, the OnePlus 8 Pro cameras are a big improvement over the camera setups found on the 7 Pro and 7T Pro. The OnePlus 8 Pro comes with a sizable 4510mAh battery, which is the biggest OnePlus has ever put in a handset. The OnePlus 8 Pro could comfortably last a day on a single charge with typical uses including gaming, video playback, social media, messaging, video calls and photography. Twenty twenty has been a big year for Motorola already. First its own foldable phone, the Motorola Razor, and now we have the Motorola Edge Plus. 
The H Plus isn't just a rebranded Z series phone, it's a fresh start for the company's product line. This is a device pushed to the extremes and which can compete with the best such as Samsung Galaxy and Apple handsets. Motorola has furnished the H Plus with many elements from the leading flagships. The screen is carved over the sides like the waterfall display from the Samsung Galaxy S20 and Samsung Galaxy Note 10 lines of phones. It doesn't have an IP water and dust resistance rating, but Motorola claims its design is water repellent. And of course, it contains one of the rarest of features on a flagship phone, a 3.5mm headphone jack. The display is 6.7 inch Full HD Plus OLED panel, it's large, sharp and the endless edge sides are very attractive. The display's 21 by 9 aspect ratio makes this phone feel narrow, meaning some people may find it awkward to use one-handed. Like many other flagship phones in 2020, you can set the edge plus to light up its sides when receiving notification. Another great feature is the 90Hz refresh rate meaning smooth video and gameplay. The phone's specs are top tier from its Snapdragon 865 chipset to the 12GB of RAM and 256GB of storage. The Motorola H Plus packs a traditional quad rear camera setup. The star of the show is the 108MP main shooter which can use pixel binning tech that reduces the megapixel count while effectively expanding the size of each pixel to let in more light. The phone also has an 8MP telephoto camera with 3x optical zoom and a 16MP ultra-wide camera as well as a time-of-flight depth sensor to enable bokeh effect in portrait shots. The main shooter can also capture video in 6K UHD. Pictures taken with this device looks great with rich color and great dynamic range. On the front there is a 25MP camera for selfies which delivers great picture quality. The H Plus is also 5G capable. It packs a 5000mAh battery and Motorola claims it will last for up to 2 days. Sadly the H Plus maxes out at 18W charging which has been the case with the previous Motorola phones. It also supports 15W fast wireless charging and 5W reverse wireless charging.